Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let Campaign Assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, November 16. I'm Juliet bennett Ryla here with Ben Berkeley and John Weigel, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. For today's top story, we're talking about a research project which took 500 chatbots, each with their own persona, fed them news from one day in July 2020, and let them loose in a Twitter-like social media platform to discuss it. What happened next? Well, we'll see you in a moment, but first, let's catch up on everything else making headlines in the world of business and tech. Amazon is now selling security robots for businesses. The $2,400 robots can autonomously patrol office spaces 24-7 with their high-def night vision cameras. For an extra $99 a month, the cute little wheelie fellow will notify ring agents if it detects something out of place. Just want to add in really quick on the cute little wheelie fella angle there. Surprisingly, is kind of cute. It's like not giving scary vibes, which you would expect from like a security robot. So at least it's like slightly changing my perception of the really terrifying robot future. Yeah, it kind of looks like the wheel of a of a desk chair, actually. Just large. Hmm. Huh. All right. Very cute. Doesn't match the cuteness of the Walmart robots that I've been seeing that have the googly eyes, but, you know, it's close. All right. Moving along, Airbnb dropped $200 million on AI startup GamePlanner.ai just weeks after Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky teased AI's role in enabling his company to become the ultimate travel agent. What does that mean? We don't know, actually. So we'll try it on that. Snapchat launched Beauty Bestie, a new augmented reality makeup filter that doubles as a marketing tool. The filter is a partnership with NYX Professional Makeup and links out to real makeup products that users can buy to recreate their filtered looks. This is kind of weird. A study found that when it comes to white faces, that is white people's faces, people are more likely to identify AI generated images as real than real photos of real people. With faces of color, however, participants said both AI and real images were real 51% of the time. So there you go. Sephora will remove all fragrances from its shelves, saying that this category is one of the most targeted for theft. Tester bottles will still be available, but customers will need to request box packages from the store staff if they want to check out. And finally, Uber Tasks is a pilot program that allows users to hire drivers in Fort Myers, Florida and Edmonton, Alberta for chores. So it is basically TaskRabbit. I, I just wish them well. It feels like some executive is like, hey, you know what we should do? That thing that the company that's been around for 15 years is doing. And like, I just don't, I mean, I suppose Uber's in a really good position to do this and add to a suite of offerings, but like, it just feels like there's already such an entrenched player in this space. I don't know. I'm I'm a little skeptical on it. Yeah, this feels like yet another Uber add-on, essentially, because a few years ago, I don't even know how long ago, maybe five years ago, we got Uber Eats, uh-huh. which kind of took up the DoorDash space and the Seamless space. So now it just kind of seems like they're just infringing on every other app ever. It's kind of like the the driver equivalent of Instagram these days, I guess. Right. And then it, maybe we can just combine it all to one. Like, OK, pick me up, take me to Taco Bell, and then can you do my laundry for me before you leave? Yes. And can you please produce some beats for me while you do it as well? That would be great. (laughs) Full service. All right. That better be like a 25% tip also. All right. On to the main story. We're going to talk about an AI experiment that made a surprisingly pleasant Twitter. So researchers built a fake Twitter populated with bots, not to be confused with actual Twitter, which is now called X, which as far as I can tell is only mostly bots, maybe maybe half bots. I don't, I don't know. Um, and it turns out there's some kind of promise that these kind of simulations could tell us something about human behavior for a fascinating read from Business Insider, which I think you should read all of, but we're going to break down a couple of key points. Okay, so here's how it worked. So the lead scientist, Petter Tornberg, and his team, they built 500 different chatbots using ChatGPT 3.5, and they gave each one a persona. So 
you're this years old, this is your gender, this is how much money you make, you're this religion, these are your politics, your preferences, et cetera. And then they fed the bots news from July 1st, 2020. If you remember, that was a time the pandemic was going on. We had a lot of like, Black Lives Matter movement is going on. So there's a lot of stuff in the news. And then they let the bots loose inside a Twitter-like social media platform to talk about the news from that day. Why, why is that exactly? So basically, the idea is that if large language models like ChatGPT are designed to act like people talking, that if we let them talk to each other in this sort of controlled environment that maybe we would learn how to build a better social network for real people. And it would be easier and quicker for researchers to effectively and efficiently study human behavior. That was the idea. So it's kind of like a social media petri dish where chatbots can be with their own kind? Yeah, kind of like that. And hopefully act enough like humans that the <laughs> insights we gain are relevant to humans. I guess one thing I'm curious, is like, how does this inform like a better social media? Like, is there anything that was learned from this that feels like, OK, if we actually make these adjustments and change the algorithm in this way, it's going to make things a little bit more, I don't know, productive or peaceful or just not so garbage fiery? Yeah. So at least with the bots, which of course are bots playing in a box sandbox, they were actually able to create a better social media platform for themselves. So they gave Twitter three models. The echo chamber is what we talk a lot about with social media. You're only seeing posts from other people who think exactly like you. So you're just kind of like preaching to the choir, essentially. When they put the bots in an echo chamber and the bots only saw posts from other people with their same ideologies, Twitter, fake Twitter was very pleasant, but also quiet. There wasn't a lot of engagement. Then they tried a discover version where whatever post had the most likes, that was the one that was going to show up in your feed, regardless of how you felt about it. And that was a lot of high engagement, but it was very negative. People being, you know, kind of sniping at each other and arguing. Then they tried this other thing called the bridging algorithm that showed. So let's say you're a liberal bot. That's your ideology. You're going to see the posts that have the most likes from conservative bots. So you're kind of seeing like what the opposite side is saying and liking all the time. And apparently this also saw high engagement, but these bots were able to find common ground with one another. I, I'm assuming their programming is not like ratcheted up on the rage. Yeah, part of this seems quite tame, actually, from what I've experienced on social media just daily. It, it just seems like all these robots genuinely are OK to hear each other's points out a little bit more. And from screenshots in this article, it kind of comes off that way too. But I guess the idea here is that they want to try to make this as close as possible model human interaction on social media. And maybe they're making some waves, but I don't, I guess it's not quite there yet. It looks like. Yeah. I think the theory here is that the quote that Torberg had was when discussing political issues, if 50% of the people you agree with vote for a different party than you do, that reduces polarization. Your partisan identity is not being activated. So if a bot's like, hey, I like whatever, and you maybe are ideologically different from that bot, but you're still finding that common ground, like all of a sudden now you're not, it's not an us versus them situation. I think that's what it was trying to get at. Now, can we make human beings do this? That's 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 the bigger question. <laughs> yeah, it feels like we, we're, we are specifically programmed to try to hurt each other. Yeah. So it feels like that might be the big difference maker here. But it, it, this is, I mean, I, I, love, I love this experiment. I also will say I just like as an aside love the idea like this is where I finally start to be like yes ro like robots replace us that I don't want to be on social media ever again like this is this is great let's just have them do all of normal social media now yeah why not um, but there was some promise here uh, there was a political scientist Lisa Argyle who told Insider that a lot of times when you assign profiles to large language models and you have them answer survey questions they do answer questions similar to the humans they were modeled after so you know, it may, there may be some predictability here, which, of course, raises a bunch of ethics questions. But, you know, we'll see. For now, we can just watch bots hang out. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not subscribed, get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email. And we will see you tomorrow.
Let me tell you about a show that I've been loving lately. It's called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's hosted by the incredible John Lee Dumas. It's available now on the HubSpot Podcast Network. Entrepreneurs on Fire stokes inspiration and shares strategies to fire up your entrepreneurial journey and create the life that you've always dreamed of. I'm a big fan of this podcast. It has energy, it has value, and it's all about learning about entrepreneurship. I was just listening to an episode the other day. JLD interviewed Jay Rogers, who was such a wealth of information. He kind of went into how entrepreneurship chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And that failure only happens when you stop trying to win. A lot of gems in this one. So I highly recommend checking out that particular episode along with the rest. So go listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.